Welcome to the Heel Toe Corner Club. We're in your corner with another great video, this time a DIY on changing front brake pads on a TLX Type S. This is probably gonna work for an MDX Type S as well. This is a brand new Brembo caliper to Acura, and we wanted to make sure that you knew how to change out these pads in case your pads wore out. Ours wore out really super prematurely due to some track time, um, but changing these pads was a lot simpler than even I thought it was gonna be. The Brembo brakes on the TLX Type S are a little bit of a different caliper than I've uh, seen before. It's got this bridge that goes over the back, which probably makes it very strong and stable, except for that means the pads can't come out the back. On a lot of these types of calipers, you can slide the pads out without taking the caliper off, which is really nice. Not the case here. You actually have to take the caliper off to change out the pads. There's two 19 millimeter head bolts in the back that attach it to the knuckle, and those are pretty easy to get out. Although the one tricky thing is that there's a hard line that goes from the caliper back to the chassis of the car. You still have a conventional rubber hose between the knuckle and the frame, but uh, in order not to open up the brake system, you're gonna wanna disconnect the hard line uh, from the bracket back here. What you can do is, once you have it unbolted, you can kind of feed, feed the hard line back into the bracket and give it a little bit of a rotating motion and then get a rag, you can actually just set this caliper right on top of the rotor heat shield so it doesn't get scratched or whatever. Now in order to, to do the service, you'll want to use a bungee cord of some kind, which I have one here. And you're just gonna try to suspend this. These things can be a little finicky, but if you get it bungeed up here, there you go. Just kind of hang it off the control arm or something. This helps the caliper stay steady, steady enough so that you can actually service it. Okay, so the way the pads are held in, you notice the pin doesn't go all the way across. It only comes right out here. Once you have uh, the caliper off the rotor, the only thing really holding the pads in place is these springs against the pins. So you can just slide them right off and then the whole pad comes out. So once the caliper's off, it's a pretty simple change. Wow, look at that wear pattern. I've got like at least four millimeters over here and we're practically metal to metal on this side. Uh, two different track days with this car put in this sort of wear pattern. And this car only has about 6,000 miles on it. I've completely wore out these factory brake pads. Um, this is what uh, the track use does. Um, interestingly enough, let's see, this pad was in here like like uh, th this, right? Yeah. So that means that this was the outboard side at the top, right? So it wore away much more aggressively on the top side, um, which is really interesting. I mean, I would have thought a caliper that mounts like this would have a more even wear pattern, but I guess I was just wearing it that hard. Let's see what the other pad looks like. Oh yeah, I got all the way down to the backing plate on this one. So that means that on the inside, I've scraped the rotor a little bit, which is really kind of a no-no, but it's only a little. So when all the brake pad material wears off of, of the pad and you're down to the backing plate and that contacts the rotor face, this is sort of what you're gonna see. A lot of roughness as basically, it was just grinding away at the rotor. Uh, in almost all circumstances, you'll wanna replace this rotor. Uh, you could resurface them, uh, with a lathe and cut that down into a flat surface again. Um, I have neither a lathe nor another rotor. So we're gonna run it as is. And if you're in a pinch situation, I want you to feel comfortable that a new brake pad on here will stop the car. It isn't gonna be ideal and it should definitely be uh, addressed at some point. But in a, in a pinch situation like what I've got, cause I got another road trip coming up with this car, uh, I'm just gonna throw some new pads in here and it'll work perfectly fine. 
brand new Honda Brembo brake pads. Uh, so there's a lot of thickness there. I uh, looked it up and they come with about nine plus a little bit more millimeters of material. The service limit is supposed to be two millimeters. This is what zero millimeters looks like and that's probably one. On the other worn pad, I guess probably the service limit's gonna be right around here. So when your brake pads get about that thin, that's when you're gonna start digging into this wear indicator. This is gonna make some extra noise and alert you that you need to change your, your brake pads. I uh, went ahead and wore down my wear indicator as well. It's just, Streets of Willow will do that, I suppose. Here is the part number for the factory Honda pads, and I've got these for sale on HeelToeAuto.com. I'll put a link down in the description. But it's a Honda-specific compound, and there's been a lot of press about this car saying these brake pads absolutely are not track pads, and I can tell you that they do stop fine on the track, but they are not track pads in any great sense of the word. And at this time of this video, there are not very many options available for aftermarket pads for you. Um, I do have access to Carbotech pads in this um, backing plate. Hawk at this time isn't making one, but I'm sure that Hawk, EBC, they're all gonna jump on this pad as, as soon as they can. This is gonna be the same caliper as on an MDX Type S and probably maybe some future Type S models as well. Um, but for now, we're just gonna throw in some new factory pads and get down the road. My handy dandy caliper spreader. If you are an avid listener to the Heel Toe Corner Club podcast, you'll know that I mentioned this uh, after Christmas. Mrs. Heel Toe got this for me for Christmas and I was having designs on doing this exact car with the uh, caliper spreader. So let's see how it works. I've got it set all the way in and it fits inside the pistons, but I'm not quite able to get it inside the caliper body all the way. So I'm expecting that this will be good enough to expand the pistons out. If you don't know what I'm doing, as you wear the brake pads down, they get thinner and thinner, which means the caliper pistons uh, protrude more and more from the caliper body. When you put new pads in, you gotta account for that extra thickness that was worn away. Push the pistons back in, otherwise the whole works doesn't fit back over the rotor again. And on a sliding uh, piston, sliding caliper piston, it's like one big one and you could just grab it with a, uh, a channel lock and, and push it in. But on these multi-piston, especially fancy calipers, you don't wanna put tools on them and you got to push a lot of pistons at one time so hopefully I've been able to get them all pushed in oh yeah I'm pretty flush with the caliper body there so good on you this is a snap-on I'm sure you can get this stuff from Sears or, or Harbor Freight for less money but it was Christmas and I said hey wife spurge on me and she did now that I've got the calipers compressed it's time to install the new pads and it's just a simple matter of pushing against the, the spring clip in the housing of the caliper and getting it pushed up onto the holes that are there. Boom. Just that simple. Push it in, push against the clip, and slide it over the pin. Piece of cake. All right, with the new pads in the caliper, it's time to put her back into place. So I'm gonna unhook from my tether here and shift this rag aside. Carefully weasel my brake line through the caliper bracket, or the brake line bracket. And we should plop right over the rotor again if I got them compressed enough. Yeah, here we go. Voila. Lining this thing up is a little tricky because of that hard line situation. It kind of wants to push the caliper in a certain direction, but if you get it in there just right, you can find the threads and always do this by hand. You're threading, yeah, right into the caliper. And so if you screw up these threads, you're gonna be in a world of pain trying to fix it 
fix the caliper bolts. These aren't ones that I would want to time sort or anything like that. So I'm just going to run them in by hand. I don't have the torque specification for this. These bolts. What the fuck is that? Oh, there it is. 50. 50 foot pounds. I've got no problem torquing this by feel. Okay, bolted in place, put the little clip back in place on the brake line, and you're done. Then it's just a matter of bedding them in. All right, as I wipe this thing down, because we want it to look amazing, right? Uh, I've got a couple of comments to address some questions that you probably have. Number one, I didn't put any brake lube on the backing plates of the pads. Um, most of the time it'll tell you to do that. I did look up the service manual. It didn't specifically recommend something. I, mean, I, think, I think it mentioned putting lubricant in there, but to be honest with you, there wasn't any on the factory pads when I pulled them off. And I don't usually go for that lube anyway. Feel free to go on without it. Uh, I don't necessarily think that you must have uh, lubricant there unless you are having a particular noise that you're trying to get rid of. Um, another thing is, the surface of the rotors. Clearly, I'm not resurfacing these rotors. Uh, I think it's a little bit mythy to say that you must have a fresh rotor surface with new pads. Some brake pad manufacturers like absolutely tell you you must. The reason why they do that is because you're much more guaranteed not to have any vibration or weird noises if you have a fresh surface. And then therefore, if you put new brake pads in and you've got a problem, you don't call them complaining. But the reality is, is that if your rotors are in good shape, if you're braking smoothly and you're not having any excessive weird noise, there isn't really a strong reason to resurface them if you're putting the same or a more aggressive brake pad in place. If you're putting a milder brake pad in there, you could run into a problem. And the reason why is this. When you do your bedding procedure or any normal driving, a transfer layer goes from the brake pads onto the rotor. And when that transfer layer is here, it's kind of like creates a sticky surface for the brake pads to, to attach to. If you put a more aggressive brake pad in than the previous one, the old surface is gonna wear down and then you're gonna put a new surface on with the more aggressive pads. Going to the same pad compound like I have here, this mating surface that's on these rotors is already fairly well suited to the pads that I'm using. So it's not specifically critical that I resurface or do anything crazy with these rotors or put new rotors on in this particular stage. Um, are there situations where you should do that? Yes, definitely. Um, is it the end of the world if you don't? No, it's not. Uh, I've had a lot of people do uh, a brake pad that's just a swap, pad swap, and it works out just great. And if you are like many Honda owners and you are getting a vibration or noise with your factory original pads, putting a little bit more aggressive brake pad in will clean up the surface, you'll get rid of your vibration most of the time, and it'll break smoother and better than it ever did before. And you don't necessarily need to resurface these, just put better pads in. And if you have any question about which pads you should be running, definitely reach out to us, leave a comment below, something like that. We'll be able to consult you and help you get a brake pad that's gonna be suitable to your needs. That's probably a pretty good, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, thumbnail? Another tip, after you've compressed the pistons back into the caliper, you've actually got an excess of space between the pads and the rotors. When you go to push your foot on the pedal the first time, it's gonna sink right to the floor. Don't worry, this is just the pistons extending back out for, so the pads can meet the caliper. Pump it a couple of times and you're gonna be good to drive the car after that. Just don't be freaked out by that initial sinking of the brake pad because you, you know, need to put those pistons back into place. All right, the torque spec on this bolt is 50 foot-pounds. I've calibrated my hand and this wrench to exactly 50 foot-pounds, which is gonna be grabbing it somewhere right around here and pulling as hard as I can. There you go, torque to spec. <laughs> we got brand new wheels on this car. Oh, actually, you know what? These are not gonna fit very well with these spacers on here, are they? 
I'm jumping the gun, Graham. Jumping the gun. All right, a little bit of bonus footage for you. I've done the brakes on the TLX. I also got these really sweet Titan 7 TS5s. Oh, in 285 section width. These are 19 by 10 plus 37 offset. And they're looking pretty hot. Got some Ray's chromoly lug nuts. I don't know if that's sacrilegious to do that or not. Check out the cool pattern on these. It's like a saw blade. Thank you so much for watching this video and changing the brake pads on the Acura TLX Type S. These Brembo calipers really were surprisingly easy for us to work on. And we have uh, at least one pad option available, more to come soon. So if you need to change out your pads for a track day or even just regular maintenance, I hope this video was really helpful for you. Subscribe uh, to our channel because we're gonna do more TLX stuff as time goes by. And of course, like this video, make any comments if you appreciated what we've done here. Hope you have a great day. Heel toe is in your corner.